Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Here's an updated guy for the flat diffusion install. Thank you again for my Discord community who pointed out some errors to me and helped me get everything fixed. You should absolutely join my community. Also, before we get started here, I want to talk about the many questions of why do you actually need Vlad Diffusion? Now, what I learned from online discussions is that automatic 11.11 seems to slow down a little bit in its development in regards to getting new updates, to fixing bugs, but also to sticking to the development of newer technology. Now, Vlad Diffusion tries to solve these problems by having a lot of updates, fixing back sooner and also for example including torch 2.0 directly into your install now you can do an update with automatic 11.11 for torch 2.0 but it might cause errors and a lot of the extensions also might not work with that so that might actually not be a good idea. So let's get started with this video now. This is the GitHub page for Vlad Diffusion. When you scroll down here, you have a preview of the web UI. You can see it uses a lot of nice sliders and it has also these extensions here installed already for you. For example, ControlNet, an image browser, LoRa, which is pretty nice. Another benefit, as I already said, is it is optimized for Torch 2.0. It runs with SDP, which can help with low memory cards. And you can, if you want to, enable Xformers, but because it is running with Torch 2.0, you don't really need that anymore. And I have had a lot of people tell me that they actually get a lot of problems from activating Xformers in the settings after the install. So you might want to leave that turned off. Now down here you have a short list on what you need to do to install this and this time I'm going to do things a little bit differently. So if you followed my guide yesterday, maybe deinstall Python 3.10.6 and instead install Python 3.10.9. Again, we're going to scroll down here and here we have the Windows installer for 64 bit. Download that, run through the install. Again, it is super important that you go and choose the customized install and then you also choose that this is added to the paths of window in the settings. You can also, if you want to check for that, if this has actually happened by going down to your search, typing environment and choosing edit environment variables for your account. You click on that. This is the window that is popping up. You want to double click here on path. So here you can see we have three of them in here. One is for the Python scripts, one is for Python and one is for the Python launcher. So this is added automatically by the install with the hook that I talked about. The next thing we need here is Git for Windows. So simply download that and install that. It's very easy to do. And one thing that is really important here to get the most out of Vlad Diffusion is to download the CUDA toolkit, which of course everything is linked below my video. Here you have some choices. So you want to click on Windows. Here's only one choice for the architecture. Choose your Windows version. In my case, it's 11. And then the install type, you probably only want to install it locally. So use here EXA local. And then you download this run through the install and then you are set up to do your Vlad Diffusion install. For the Vlad Diffusion install, you want to create a folder. I have mine in my user directory, just an empty folder. Then we go back to the install GitHub page here and we want to copy this line here. Go back to the folder and here in the address bar, click write CMD, hit enter, and this will open up the command window. Here you paste that in with control V and then you hit enter. And this will simply clone all of the content for the Vlad Diffusion onto your drive. So here you now have this folder, it's called automatic. Click on that to open it. And then for the install, you don't use the launch PI as I did yesterday. Instead, you're using the web UI.bat. As the guide is pointing out here, this will create a virtual Python environment for your 
where this is running. Now, again, that process really takes some time. There is no progress bar. So if it looks like it's getting stuck, just let it sit there until it runs through the end. If you see some error messages, mostly they don't really mean anything. So let it run through. At some point, it is going to ask you if you want to download the standard model. I would say yes to that because otherwise the web UI is not going to start. But you can delete that afterwards because I'm going to show you how to set up the paths. So it's loading all of the models from your automatic 1111 folder. After all of this is done, you see here your local address. You can either copy this over to your browser or hold control and click on that link. And that will then load that into your browser automatically. Now let's look at some important settings that you should change to get started smoothly. So the first thing is to go over to settings and you want to go through some stuff here with me. First of all, you want here to go to user face on the left side. The first thing here that is important is up here you have UI. You can actually click on that. There's a long list of different UI designs. When you select one, you can actually click here on the preview theme button and this will show you a picture of what it looks like. I am using Gradio default. This is why mine looks like that. Now, mine might look different than yours because I'm using the Opera GX browser in dark mode. This is why everything here is dark for me. For you, it might be white. Of course, after you've done that, you want to click on apply settings here. Now, sometimes for some settings, it's enough to restart the UI, but restarting the UI sometimes actually introduces problems with some functions. So alternatively, what you want to do here is to close down your CMD window and just restart it from from the user UI bet. Let's go through some other settings I'm suggesting for you. So first of all, down here you have the quick settings and there you want to at the SD underscore VAE. Now what this is doing after you've restarted everything is you have up here a quick selector for the VAE you're using. I'm using that a lot because different models sometimes need a different VAE to get a better looking result or a more colorful result. So that is actually a good choice to have this up here as a pop down menu. Another very important thing you want to do here is to unhook send size when sending prompt or image to another interface. Interface. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because every time you send from text over here to image to image, this will also send the size resolution here. And if you use that a lot, like I do for an upscaling process and image to image, this will mean you always have to set the size here and that can be quite a pain. Next, we're going up to stable diffusion here and there. If you want to use X formas, you have to click here to activate that and then of course restart again. Now you might not actually need that because this web UI is using Torch 2.0 and also SDP to make everything faster. Now here's another very important thing. You want to go here to system paths and there you have the different paths, for example, for your stable diffusion checkpoints, but also for your VAE files so that this web UI can load all of these models from there and you don't have to copy them. You don't have to re download them again. Another important thing, when you click on the left side here for images, you will see that the file format here as a standard file format is JPEG for your images, but also JPEG for your grids. If you want to have them in PNG, just write PNG in here. So you have a looseless file format, of course, that needs more storage on your drive. Another setting you might want to do can be found here under live previews. Here you have the steps that should be rendered until you see a preview. I set mine to one, which means that it's updating every render stop, but you can also set it to a higher value. What this will do is when you render something, it will show you a little animation here of what is already happening. The benefit for me in this case is that I can see if something is going wrong wrong if I don't like the result and then I can simply interrupt the render and save some time and computing power like that. 
under sampler parameters, you can hide or unhide different sampler method. And I found when I installed it that quite a lot of them have been hidden. So all of them with a check mark here are hidden from your pop down menu. And there are some of my favorites among them. So I unchecked, for example, DPM plus plus two SA Keras. For that, again, you have to apply that and then restart completely, not just restart the UI. And there you can see I have have these samplings methods. And last but not least, it has a built-in image browser. Now for me, for some reason, when I go to this tab, it doesn't automatically load the images. I have to click on first page here every time I go to that. Here you can see the images that you have already generated. If you have something you don't like, you can click on that. And then down here you have a delete button so you can remove it from your drive. That's fairly useful. Now, as you have seen here, when I go to the first first page, there is a limited number of images that are shown here. So for that, you're going to the settings, you're going here on the left side to image browser. And here you can set the number of the columns, the number of the rows, the minimum number of pages per load. And what you can also do here is that you can make your check mark to use optimized images in the thumbnail interface. Another thing you might want to look into is here, I don't have clip skip on the top as I have an automatic 1111. The reason for that is because here it is actually built into the interface. So when you look down here, you have clip skip with a slider that goes from one to four. Now, usually for most models, clip skip one is perfect. So it takes all of the layers. Now, when you have a model like, for example, a ref animated, you might want to use clip skip two. This can also be beneficial for a lot of the anime models out there. As in automatic 1111 down here, you have your script and one of the scripts you absolutely want to check out is the X epsilon plot. And one of the things you want to check out in there is the function prompt SR, which means search and replace. For that, you can set a word that is in your prompt. For example, here, let's say I'm using the word ninja here. So I would write down here ninja, comma, and then have a list of other things I want to replace it with. I could write ninja, priest, wizard, astronaut, policewoman, stuff like that, every time with a comma in between. And then this will render through all of these variations where this part of the prompt is changed. Now, here's a pro tip. When you have one of these words that is looking for, for example, ninja in that case, everything you write after the comma can be multiple words. So you can, for example, also write older ninja or young geisha. You can do a list of things. You can also have other things in there. For example, you can write ninja, blonde, black hair, uh, sunglasses. That is also okay. You can do a lot of things that can be super, super helpful. Let me know in the comments if you want me to check this out in my live stream on Sunday. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.